Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a quick video investigating and fixing the fault on this 2017 Volkswagen Touareg. You can just see we've got the engine warning light on there. Now we can clear the fault, but it comes back after it. Well, one of the codes actually comes back straight away and one of the codes comes back after about a mile. Um, but we've done a full code scan with the top down diagnostic machine. We have got some other faults in there, but the main ones that we're looking into in the engine control module, you can see we've got two fault codes there. P22A7, which is knock sensor heating, bank one sensor two, and then we've also got a communication code, the same sensor as well. So just gonna get it up in the air now, just run you through where the sensor's located, some tests that we can do on the sensor. We've got a sensor on standby because I'm pretty sure that the sensor is gonna be the issue on this one. And then we can run you through how to replace it as well. Uh, but with these, when they do fail, they normally give communication codes, whereas sometimes you might get a NOx exceedance code, which could be relating to a different issue. Um, but I've done quite a few of these now for communication issues. So we'll just get it up in the air now and just run you through where everything's located and how to fit it and test it and everything like that. And if also, before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Now all the tools that we're using and all the parts, I'll put links to them in the description as well. Uh, it's just coming up from underneath. I just sort of rigged the multimeter up at the minute just to do some tests, but I'll just run you through. Basically, we've got the DPF here, and if you just come up over the suspension arm, just see at the front, you basically got the AdBlue injector there, which just goes in in front of the flexi part of the exhaust there, comes down to the DPF, just on top of the DPF, and just see up there where the pressure pipes go on, and then coming just to the back of that, just in front, the front of the at the back of the joint there. This sensor there is knock sensor too. You can just see the wiring harness comes round over the top there and just to the connector on this side of it. Now at the minute, just got it disconnected, just to undo it, really straightforward. Just try to focus on that. All you need to do is just pull this little grey tab back and you can simply pinch it in and pull the connector off. So we're just going to do a couple of tests on that now, just running through how to check it. I'll just show you quickly. Got a couple of tools used for doing the uh, these knock sensors. We've got this laser tool. I'll put a link to these in the description below as well. These are quite handy for getting a decent purchase on the sensor. We've got a new thread chaser just in case. Sometimes they can damage the threads when you're pulling them out. New genuine Volkswagen sensor. Now it's always worth getting a genuine sensor. They're a lot better. I've had quite quite a few troubles with some of the aftermarket ones. Um, we've got a wiring diagram as well. I'll run you through actually testing it anyway. And I've just put a steel shot of this, but you can just see the sensor there, that's knock sensor two. Basically, pins two and five are earth, so we're just gonna check them for a good earth. Pin one is the 12 volt supply, pin three and four are the can lines. So on the can lines, we're gonna be looking for about two and a half volts on each of them. And we'll just get um, set up. Just got the multimeter hanging there now, so while I'm testing it and probing it, I can just show you the readings that we've got. And all I've done is just simply clamp that to the exhaust there to get a good earth on that side of the multimeter. And rather than actually probing the centre of the um, plug there, just bend it down. You can just see we've got some, some focus on that. You can just get in on the tabs there, so it saves you actually probing in the end of it, that's all. Um, but if you hold the plug in this position, pin one is at that end and pin five is at that end. So all we're going to do now is just mount the camera up, just while we run through the tests on there to check that we've got all the right feeds to it. Right, so we're now ready to test it. Just to start with, we're going to test pin one, which is the 12 volt supply. Now we have got the ignition on in the car, just on stage two as well at the minute. We can see pin one there, We've got 12 volts, just showing less than 12 volts. That's a 12 volt supply there. So we know we've got a 12 volt feed to it. Now pins three and four should be the can lines. So if you just check both of them, we should have about two and a half volts on each. We should both basically add up to five volts. So we've got 2.48 there and then 2.52 on there. So the can lines are okay. And the next one, we're just going to put the multimeter onto the resistance setting. Obviously we're connected up to a good earth. So if we just check the uh, Resistance on pin two. 
So we've got good air there. If it was if it was sort of um, clamped up to something a bit better than the exhaust, we might actually get that a bit lower as well. So that's a good air there. And then on pin five as well, exactly the same. So we know we've got two earths, a 12 volt supply, and the can lines are okay. Just quickly test the wiring. Now we can get on to actually replacing the knock sensor itself. Just run you through that quickly. Right, so we're now ready to get the knock sensor out. First thing we're gonna do is just undo the actual connector piece of it. You can just see we've got one 10 mil there, another 10 mil there. I'm just gonna get that out first, just unclip it. It's just when we come to undoing it there, we can then twist it around without it twisting the wire up. So we'll just get that off first, dangle it down, and run you through getting the sensor out. Right, so that actually cracked off quite easily with the tool just put the bar on it and sometimes they're really tight and as you're winding them out they keep pulling the threads out with them you just have to sometimes use a lot of heat on it and just keep going but it's cracked off nicely now so you should just be able to use a spanner just to wind it out the rest of the way Right, so that's the old sensor out. As you can see, it didn't come out too bad. Just as I was undoing it, it did just keep working it a little bit. It was a little bit tight. But I've known these to be a lot worse than that. Uh, just put a bit of lube on it, just a bit of WD-40, just to help it as well. Uh, but now that it's out, all we're going to do is just get the new sensor in. Just get that located and nipped up, locate the wiring in. Just refit the 10 mils on there, refit the connector. Then we'll drop it back down, get the diagnostic machine on it, clear the fault codes out, and just see if there's any procedures that need to be done to tell it it's had a new knock sensor. With the new knock sensor, it comes with some ceramic paste on there, so you don't need to worry about putting any uh, any grease or anything like that on it. So we can just simply thread that on and nip it up. It doesn't need to be mega tight, just a bit more than a light nip, really, that's all. So that's all connected back up now. 10 mils nipped up. The knock sensor's nipped up and 22 mil there. Just gonna drop it back down now and just get, the, get it up back up to the diagnostic machine. All right, so back in the car now. All we're gonna do to start with is just clear all these fault codes. So you've got the two in the ECU, the engine ECU there. Now there is some other fault codes on this one as I we was saying earlier on, but they're relating to the one related to the handbrake issue there. I think we've got a few others. I think one of them's relating to one of the cameras. Yeah. So we're just going to clear all the fault codes and then we'll run through the uh, functions and see if there's an option to tell it it's had a knock sensor on there. Now, as I said before, this fault code, as soon as a, one of the codes wouldn't clear and one of them was coming back on within about a mile. So once I've done it and we've ran through it, we'll just give it a road test. We'll do three or four miles anyway. Um, then we'll just plug it back in, just run through the codes quickly, just to make sure that uh, it's fixed it and nothing else has come back in. But you can see to start with, it has successfully cleared all the codes, whereas before it wouldn't. So we'll just go into the engine ECU there.
Right, so just had a good scan through on the top down diagnostic machine. Now, I can't actually see anything in the adaption or the basic settings. The only thing that I did find in the basic settings, but it's uh, it's not anything that we'll need to do specifically, is there is actually a test that you can do. Knock sensor 2 test, knock sensor 1 test, and the knock, uh, knock sensor test model base. So it's not actually anything specifically to run it through, just telling it, telling it that it's had one. So all I'm going to do with the fault codes cleared now, just give it a good run. So I'll do three or four miles on it and just let you know that it's definitely fixed the fault. If I do find any other information about uh, anywhere where there is a specific function to tell it it's had one, I'll run you through that. I'll put that in the description below. I'll update you with a later video on that one as well. Right, so we just got back from a decent road test. We've actually done five miles in the end now. Uh, it's run out absolutely spot on. We've got no engine warning light on. As I said before, one of these codes wouldn't clear. It was coming straight back on. So pretty much knew straight away really that it fixed it. But it's always nice to give it a good run and just check it. But I always do a full scan as well, um, just to make sure I've got no issues relating um, to tying in with the fault or anything like that. All it's come up with, you can see the ECM engine control module is nice and clear there. We've just got a couple of faults that have come back, which is to do with that parking brake one and that camera one there so and um, we know that's definitely fixed the fault now just a faulty another faulty knock sensor unfortunately these are quite a common issue it seems to be inside the sort of ECU section of them that they break down. Um, but I would recommend getting a genuine one. And so if you want to check the check the description below, I'll put links to um, the genuine item where you can get it from as well. And um, the wiring diagram, I should uh, hopefully when I'm doing the video, I've just put an overlay of that earlier on as well. But it's quite straightforward. It's always worth just testing the wiring first, though, just to make sure you don't want to just chuck a knock sensor on it without checking that first. Obviously, these are quite expensive. So, um, but yeah, hope you like the video. Hope it helps someone in the same situation if you're struggling with that fault code but yeah thanks for watching don't forget to check out some of the other content and we'll see you next time